Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's been a long time since I've done a video. This one's going to be a little bit different. It's, uh, it's actually going to be a modeling video, and uh, I don't really consider a tutorial as such because I'm not necessarily going to uh, highlight each and every tool that I'm using because I want to try to keep this one kind of software agnostic. Um, anytime you're dealing with... Uh, you know, preferred modeling packages and stuff like that, you're going to have a whole bunch of different answers and a bunch of people going, oh, I'd rather use this one versus that one. Why are you using that one? And I really want to avoid all that nonsense. It's not really um, uh, productive. Uh, let's just say that this is the software I am most comfortable with. And uh, since I'm doing something that uh, is going to be the heaviest model I ever built by the time I'm done, uh, this particular render is uh, running just shy of 10 million polygons. The model itself is about... Uh, the model's geometry I have is about 2.5 million. Um, but... Uh, uh, the main uh, reason why I'm doing this particular video is because I uh, do a lot of uh, hull paneling on my meshes uh, in geometry. I don't... Uh, I don't do a ton uh, within texture. I usually kind of leave that for like sub detail kind of noise type of stuff, unless I'm obviously doing something for a game engine. But uh, all this detail in here, it's all modeled. There's no textures on this model other than the little bit of breakup that's inside the actual windows, the blue little bits, um, just to give a little bit of uh, variation. Uh, but even the windows are modeled in, so um, you can zoom right up in into them. Um, and there's a little room inside of each window, so uh, there's no, nothing in the room other than the texture. But uh, yeah, I'm not that crazy at this type of scale. But uh, maybe if I was getting paid uh, to work on a feature film, maybe we'd do that. But uh, even that, probably unlikely. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's get going. Uh, here's just uh, kind of a sample mesh I threw together, um, and the uh, the very first thing that uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our current mesh and paste it into a new container. Uh, some applications will call this layers, some applications will call this something else. I'm just calling it container uh, for the sake of uh, consistency because uh, that's what it is. Um, in this particular application, you think of layers more similar to how uh, you think of them in Photoshop. So, uh, so my next step is actually to just start dividing up the uh, mesh uh, into fairly even, um, you know, relatively uh, the same polygon sizes. So these polygons are roughly the same shape. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it just needs to be similar. Um, and from there, let's just start uh, uh, selecting some polygons and uh, we're just going to start putting this into yet a third container. And uh, this is just for the sake of uh, uh, ease of access. Um, and uh, if you haven't guessed it already, I like to keep my polygons in a separate uh, container from my uh, base mesh. Uh, the reason for that is because I like... Um, my base mesh to remain um, intact. I don't like to cut it up too deeply in case I need to make changes uh, later on down the road. Uh, if I were to cut my panels directly into the base mesh, it makes iteration more difficult. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, There's really no other reason uh, why I do it. It's uh, just easier organizationally, too. Um, and let's say I'm, I'm happy with this for now. So I have symmetry turned on. Um, So uh, really my first step once I have a, a group of polygons, it doesn't have to be all your polygons uh, for your panels, but um, it all depends on, 
uh, on the mesh you're making, uh, how much you want to do at once, how much your software can handle at once, etc., etc. And just remove the uh, the spaces in between once you you have an inset there. Uh, I actually don't like right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in that. And go ahead and put the same inset on here. Move that excess. Uh, I don't like T junctions. I think they stand out like a sore thumb. They generally look ugly. So I'll just uh, move that away. Make it look a little bit better. Um, I kind of think of panels kind of like brick laying, so to speak. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's probably about as tedious. Uh, after that, um, really how you go from here kind of depends on what style you're going for, whether or not uh, uh, you want a lot of height to your panels or not. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with not, and I'll show uh, a few different... Uh, different variations I've done along the way. I've, uh, I always, uh, record these videos several times over just to try to get a good, uh, best take out of all of them, so, um... So I have a few different versions laying around. And just go ahead and give it a material with a uh, much tighter uh, uh, smoothing threshold. I have a smoothing threshold of 30 here so that uh, you know, the edges kind of catch light, you know, like, you know, just like you would want a micro bevel to do uh, without using up too much geometry. Um, and maybe from here, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Create some. Uh, do we have bad smoothing here? Nope. Just really sharp there. Okay, so, uh, yeah, just uh, grab some polygons. Um, you may want to be more careful than this when you go and do your own, but, uh, yeah, it's fine. And just copy those into a new container. And uh, something like this. Try to clean that up a little bit. Make it smaller. Just, uh, again, same idea. You don't want them to be the exact same measure as your polygons, and you're really just going for, like, kind of sub-detail. Um, stuff just to catch light from a distance. Um... these types of shapes going on. Uh, if you want to get uh, cute, you can basically uh, do the same kind of idea directly onto the polygon. 
um, or directly onto the uh, the base panel. But uh, maybe this time. Do an inset. Um, probably want to do it slightly less than the first one that you did, just so that um, you don't get any kind of poly fighting or anything. Um, with uh, the base mesh underneath. So you have some positive and negative detail there, which is always good. Um, you can do the same thing here, or we can do something else. Maybe make uh, You know, just stuff like that, just to, you know, build up the odd panel or a group of panels, however you want. Um, and you're kind of happy with what you got, do some mirroring. Here we have another uh, T-junction that I immensely dislike. Uh, so if you really want, uh, just uh, take uh, these things and just uh, offset them a bit. Uh, or put some detail on top of it to cover it up. Uh, that works too. But, uh, you know, when you're ready, you know, you'll have something kind of like this uh, on your mesh. Uh, you know, here's another version I did uh, a little bit earlier with some different panel types. Uh, this is one I was working on yesterday. Same kind of idea. Um, if you really want, uh, you know, to add some of those details into this one, you know, like the rounded corners, you know, it's pretty straightforward.
So usually on these sub panels, I only do uh, one kind of inset. Uh, it's probably better to uh, do it on the uh, panels before you start mirroring them over, but uh, no biggie. It's not like uh, it's never going to be a finished model, but uh, you get the idea. Trying to get all these selected as fast as I can. It's hard to talk when I'm doing it, but... <laughs> Funny thing is, when you're doing this kind of stuff, Kind of awaken some of your uh, your gaming skills. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear how quickly I'm clacking on the keyboard, but uh, so let's just say that's good enough for now. Uh, it's good enough for now. My OCD kicks in, and I have to do every single one. Uh, but let's uh, set a particular value, so 10 millimeters. Do it a second time just to kind of round them off. Um, obviously, this introduced some um, shading wackiness here, but we can solve that. That kind of thing. So you have rounded panels uh, pretty much everywhere here now. Uh, not so much on that side, but... Uh, you know, by and large, it doesn't look uh, too, too bad. Anytime I see, like, harsh, sharp edges like that, I just want to kind of get rid of them. Just kind of look this back. This uh, I put this back on the uh, base mesh, and uh, there you have it. So uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, if uh, you know you like the video, hit the like button. If you wish to subscribe to my channel so that you get updates uh, whenever I post new videos, please do so. Uh, kind of helps me, uh, you know see how many people are actually interested in uh, what I do, what I'm making uh, at any given time. Um, I still want to do some of the uh, projects I've been talking about in the past. I kind of get you know, caught up uh, here and there doing stuff. This particular contest um, has taken uh, all my free time, so uh, like a lot of that stuff got put on the back burner because uh,
Uh, because it's something that's uh, very near and dear to my heart. You know, I love spaceship design and that kind of stuff, and uh, I like to participate in that kind of stuff and um, try and make the most of it. Uh, it's always good to kind of get your name out there, too. CG Society is one of those uh, websites that uh, a lot of professional, highly high-end professional uh, artists uh, like to post their work, uh, much like ArtStation. Um, and so... Uh, being seen by those types of people just increase the likelihood that a freelance artist like myself might get hired uh, to do something. So, uh, again, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.